Good morning, everyone. The Lord is risen. Yes, he is risen indeed. We welcome you to this uh, celebration of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this Sunday morning. By way of announcements, we are glad you're uh, joining us online. We have an opportunity to each Tuesday evening to uh, jo uh, for you to join us uh, in prayer and a phone conference call. Uh, check the email sent out or check with Olga by phoning the church uh, number uh, during office hours to make sure you have the right phone number and conference call number for each Tuesday night at seven o'clock. Also, our uh, Ontario de uh, denomination of our Fellowship Baptist, Feb Central, has sent out uh, an urgent call to pray, to pray, especially set aside time between 7.30 next Sunday, April 19th, for prayer. There'll be, there's a link that Olga has sent out that you can join uh, Zoom uh, prayer time with our whole uh, denomination at 7.30 a.m. and 7.30 p.m. and set aside time throughout the day on uh, a week from uh, this Sunday for prayer. Two weeks from today on April 26th as part of our service we'll have the Lord's table as part of our service so you might want to uh, gather the elements in your home of bread and, and, and juice so that as we remember Christ and his uh, death and his body given, his blood shed, we can participate together online. We uh, want to commit this service now to the Lord. Father in heaven, we thank you that we serve a God who is on the throne, who has all things under his control. Though we, we sometimes uh, fear, we're anxious, we doubt, Lord, help us to trust you in these days. We thank you that you have unfolded an eternal plan out of your love in sending your one and only son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to come to this earth in his humanity, uh, setting aside for a time his rights as deity and to uh, willingly die and shed his blood on the cross for our sins. We thank you that we can uh, this day remember that that was not the final word, but he burst the, the chains uh, of death and he rose again on that third day and even uh, lives at your right hand, Father, to intercede for all who have put their trust in Jesus. We think this morning, Father, of uh, lives that would have been baptized this, this very hour here at Long Branch. Uh, thank you for them. Thank you that they did well that it was in their heart to be baptized today. Uh, we think of Anter and Milton. We think of Tanya, Cora, Hannah. We think of Andre. Thank you for these. And uh, though their timing of their baptism is delayed, Lord, thank you for them and help them to keep growing in your grace and knowledge and love and help us all to uh, live our lives, uh, even though we can't be together physically in these days, to live our lives with priorities centered around obeying you and seeking you and your kingdom first. We wanna pray for those who are facing uh, pain and anxiety and stress and heartache and, and fear and worry. Uh, families in our church that have lost jobs, we think of students that are out of work, for the summer, we think of those struggling financially. Lord, help us to care for one another. We pray for seniors and others who are lonely and fearful. Minister to each one. We uh, thank you for those, not only on the front lines of medical care of patients with COVID-19, but people that work in the pharmacy, in the grocery stores, and in the warehouses, and doing essential services. We thank you, for example, for uh, Steve Smith, one of our members who drives uh, transit in Mississauga. We think of uh, his wife, Lena, who spends night and day looking after the four children in the home when Steve is at work. And so these are challenges for everybody, and we pray that you'd undertake for each person, no matter what, uh, 
we're facing in these days to uh, prioritize the things of God, but also to do the mundane and the necessary in, in, a, in a cheerful uh, way where we uh, glorify you, Lord, in all that we do and whatever we do or eat, whether we eat or drink, to uh, do it all to your glory. We uh, want to th uh, thank you for our missionaries, Charlie and Cindy McCordick, who uh, are ministering in Ontario in these days uh, over uh, various devices such as phone calls, conference calls in their mission work. We pray for their health. We pray for their concern for their aging parents. We pray that you'd bless them in their work. We uh, now commit to you the word of God as Pastor Alex proclaims it. Uh, empower him by your Holy Spirit as he ministers your word. Help us, Lord, to uh, rejoice in the theme of Christ risen from the dead. Uh, we pray that uh, the Spirit of God would take your word and that we would apply it to our lives. And for all listening in, may even this day be a, a day of lives spiritually passing from death to life through faith in Christ. And help us to live to serve a risen Savior who is coming again one day to judge the earth in righteousness. So we commit it all to you. We commit uh, your people and our loved ones to you today. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Hello, Long Branch Baptist Church, and happy Easter to everyone. For those of you who have been with us during our 1 Corinthians series, today we're going to be jumping ahead to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 to 20. Again, if you want to follow along in your Bibles, the scripture reading for today is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 to 20. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. May God bless the reading of his word.
Because Christ has risen, we have hope. At one time, we had no hope. We were in our sin, and it is because of our sin that we were deserving of hell. But as we repent and put our trust in Jesus Christ, we are saved. That He died upon the cross, rose from the grave. That He took the penalty for our sin, and not just the penalty for our sin, but He broke the power of sin in our daily lives. And He rose from the grave, proving that He is the Son of God. He lived a sinless life. He fulfilled the requirements of the law, something that we could never do. We are separated because of our sin. We are reconciled through the shed blood of Christ. Remembering that repentance, true repentance, means to turn away from our sin. Remembering that this is a free gift, something that we can never earn. And as believers in Christ, we have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit enables us and empowers us to live for Him. So the gospel of Jesus Christ is not just about trying harder or doing more for God. But we are saved by grace. Our good works are a natural outflow of our relationship with God. We're not perfect, we'll make mistakes. But there is grace, forgiveness, and love at the cross. But grace is not, an excuse, is not a license to continue to sin. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Because Christ has risen, we have hope. And I'll be preaching from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12 to 20. We had Good Friday talking about how Christ died for our sins. And today we talk about res- the resurrection of Christ. You know, Paul had to deal with an issue within the Corinthian church. Within the Corinthian church, they believed that Jesus rose from the grave, but they were denying the resurrection of believers. Now, there was a belief back then, and it's still here in our day, where they believe the body is bad and only the spirit is good. So for them to be to be united back to your body, it just didn't make any sense. The resurrection of the dead sounded crazy. Now, what Paul was saying in today's passage is if there's no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has risen. And if Christ has not risen, we have no hope. Now, John MacArthur says it like this. Every person who has ever lived will be raised from the dead. They will either go to hell or they will go to heaven. In Acts chapter 24, verse 15, it says, Having a hope in God, which these men themselves accept, that there will be a resurrection of both the just and the unjust. In John chapter 15, verse 28 to 29, it says, Do not marvel at this. For an hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear His voice and come out. Those who have gone done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. In the Apostles' Creed, it says, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. John MacArthur says, this is our special bodies, fit for eternity, our resurrected bodies. The ESV says that these bodies are no longer subject to decay or aging. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 42 says, So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, and what is raised is imperishable. So the question is, why is the resurrection of the dead so important? Well, Christ rising from the dead shows that He has overcome death, and that we will rise again, showing that death has no more power over us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 26, it says, The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Now, when believers die, we go immediately to the presence of God. If you remember the thief on the cross, and Jesus said to the thief, Today, immediately, you will be with me in paradise. And in the resurrection, our spirits are united with our bodies, our transformed and renewed bodies. The ESV Study Bible puts it like this, Paul believed that those who died went to be with the Lord immediately after their death and prior to their resurrection. He also conceived of the believer's eternal existence as an embodied existence. So John Piper says it like this, in other words, before there is any glorious gathering to meet the Lord in the air, the bodies of all believers who've died will be raised from the dead, reunited with their souls, and the entire Christian church, the living and the resurrected, will meet together meet the Lord and welcome Him to establish His rightful kingdom. So the, why the resurrection is so important, it shows that Christ has conquered death. And that when our bodies rise, it shows that death has been conquered and is powerless. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 54, 55, Paul says, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? So today we celebrate that Christ has risen from the grave. And because of that, we have hope and real hope. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. And we don't remember this just once a year, 
We remember every day that Christ died, that He rose from the grave. And this is the message that we proclaim to the ends of the earth. So again, that's what I wanted to share with you today. Because Christ has risen, we have hope. We have hope. Firstly, if Christ has not risen, our faith is useless. Verse 12, But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? But because Christ has risen, we will rise. That's talking about glorification, the transformed and renewed bodies. There's different beliefs out there. One of them is called annihilationism. It basically believes for the unbeliever, suffering is not eternal. Eventually, you will just cease to exist. But Scripture tells us that re the resurrection of the dead is real and they will either go to eternity of heaven or an eternity of hell. In Matthew 25, verse 31 to 46, it says, He will say to those on the left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. These will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Now we know scripture says hell is real. It is forever. It is because of our sin that we are deserving of hell. But as we repent and put our trust in Christ, we are saved. That's why we have hope, true hope. And we are also humbled by the fact of the gospel that says all deserve, we all deserved hell. Yet Christ died for us. So basically, if Christ has been raised from the dead, Paul is saying, why is it not possible for us to be raised? Verse 12, but if preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? Acts chapter 17, verse 32, it says, Some of them heard of the resurrection of the dead, yet they mocked him. In Acts chapter 17, verse 32, they mocked them. Like, what are, what are you guys talking about? In John chapter 6, verse 44, it says, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. Verse 13 says, If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. So it's pretty clear, right? Paul is just saying, if there's no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then we have no hope, right? In verse 14, if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. That means my preaching is in vain. Our preaching is in vain. It is pointless. It is babbling. I might as well just come up here for 40 minutes and just... Just babble, right? Blah, 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 blah. Do you want to hear me for 40 minutes go blah, 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 blah. But if Christ hasn't risen, that's basically what I'm doing. It means nothing. If Christ has not risen, this, this means nothing. My preaching, our preaching means absolutely nothing. Or I can just get Kaya. Kaya right now, she's babbling, right? Blah, 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 blah. What if I just brought Kaya and let her preach to you? Blah, blah, blah for 40 minutes. But it's the same thing. If Christ hasn't risen, then this sermon, our preaching, means nothing. Verse 14, if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. You know what that would mean? It would mean that death conquered Christ. It means that we are doomed. You know, I was telling you about that documentary that I watched about the cult and the leader. And it's interesting because on their tombstone, on this person's tombstone, it literally says this. This person did not, was not born this person did not die. It's just he just visited from from another place, right? So he wasn't born. He wasn't. He didn't die. He just visited from another place. Well, that proves something, right? His body is still in the grave. It proves that he is not the Son of God. That he is just a man, regardless of what his tomb says and his followers say. His death proves he was just human. He did not conquer death, but death conquered. Him. But Christ is not in the grave. He has risen. And what does that mean to us? That He has risen. It means that He has conquered death for us, proving that He is the Son of God. Therefore, our preaching is not useless. It's not meaningless. It's not vain. But there is salvation in the name of of Jesus Christ. Preach, it says verse 14, if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. You know what that means? It means that the Word of God is meaningless. If Christ hasn't been raised, our preacher, we're preaching from the Word, which means that if He hasn't risen, this is meaningless. The Word of God is meaningless. It would mean that 
Everything that Paul has said, everything that Peter has said, everything the apostle said, everything the prophet said, it means nothing. If Christ hasn't been risen, it means absolutely nothing. But we know how important the Word of God is. Because this is not just man's Word. It is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, because Christ has risen and because this is God's Word, our preaching is not in vain. The Word that we preach, it's the very words of God. The Word of God sustains us. Motivational words will not sustain us. Can you imagine if my whole sermon was just... You can do it. Yeah, you're awesome. Just reach for the stars. Yeah, look in the mirror and say you're beautiful. Yeah, what about 40 minutes? I just talk like that. Yeah, you can do it. Yeah, go team. Yeah, for 40 minutes. It might hype you up, right? It might even motivate you for a bit. But it cannot sanctify you. Those words cannot save you because they're not, you know, we need to hear from the Word of God, not just motivational words words right that is why the word is so important to the believer so we don't need just a pat on the back or a hug right or you can do it those things are great but what the believer desperately needs to hear is they need to hear we need to hear from the word of god romans 10 17 says faith comes from hearing the word of Christ. Matthew 4, chapter 4, verse 4 says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 says, The word of God is living and active. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing the division of soul and spirits, joints and marrow, discerning the thoughts and tensions of the heart. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17 says, Every word is breathed out by God. It is profitable for teaching and reproof, correction and training that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So where do we find comfort in these tough times? We find it in the Word of God. We still have to pat each other in the back. We still have to hug each other. Well, obviously, after this whole thing dies down. And we still have to give each other a high five, obviously, after COVID-19. We still have to urge each other on. But what we need the most is to stay in the Word of God. We need to continually feed in the Word of God. And we need to continually hear the Word of God. And it also says this in verse 14, Christ has not been risen. Our faith is useless. Right? And if Christ has not been uh, risen, then it means nothing. Our faith means nothing. It means that we are still in our sins. It means that we are condemned. It means that there is no hope for us that we will spend eternity in hell. But Scripture tells us Christ has risen. And that is why you have hope. That is why I have hope for the ones who have put their trust in Christ, repented and put their trust in Christ. And as believers who are repented and put their trust in Christ, we have the Holy Spirit, and the Spirit enables us to live every day in hope, even through what we're going through today. So being a Christian, as I said before, it's not just about trying harder in our flesh to be a good person. It's not just about doing more for God, but there is nothing we can do to earn salvation. We all deserved hell. There is no one righteous, no, not one. We've all fallen short. The wages of sin is death. There's nothing we can do to save ourselves, but we are saved by grace. As we repent and put our trust in Christ, we are saved and the Holy Spirit enables us to obey. And when we live for God, as I said before, it is a natural outflow of us being followers of Christ. So we don't do good things to become followers, but we do good things because we are followers. So as again, it's a natural outflow of our relationship with Christ. But it doesn't mean that we're perfect, we'll make mistakes, but we must get back up by the grace of God. And understanding that repentance means to truly turn away to hate our sin. And as believers in Christ who, has, who, have, who have repented, we need to get baptized. Not because I tell you to or the church tells you to. It's because Christ tells us to in the Great Commission to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all that I have commanded. So baptism doesn't get you saved, but it shows the world that you belong to Jesus Christ. And you must be part of a local church, a gospel-centered church. You must be discipled. You need to grow. You need to read every day. You need to pray without ceasing. 
You need to continue to have fellowship. Even for the young people watching this, you have Thursday night after the, this thing dies down. You can Thursday night youth group. You have Friday night young adults. Fellowship is so important, especially on Sundays as well for accountability. So because Christ has risen, the word of God is not meaningless. Our preaching of the word is not meaningless, which means that for those who have heard the gospel, heard the preaching and put their trust, repented, put their trust in Christ, it means that your faith is not meaningless either. Secondly, if Christ has not risen, we are still in our sins. Verse 15 says this, more than that, we are found then to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he has raised Christ from the dead, but he does not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. You know what it means? It means the apostles lied. Verse 15, we are found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead, but he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. That would mean Paul lied to us. And you know what that would mean? That this is a lie. That the word of God is a lie. If Christ have, has not risen. You know what it means? This is false advertising. The Bible claims to have information that will set us free from sin and from eternal death. If you guys remember uh, what happened with the tobacco companies in the past, right? Back in the day, they actually claimed at one point that smoking cigarettes does not cause cancer. They even claimed that smoking cigarettes is not addictive, right? They even had doctors on their com commercial smoking cigarettes say, yeah, it's, I'm recommended to help you relax, <laughs> right? And it, there's evidence that the companies knew it was addictive, that it would cause cancer, yet they kept on prom promoting it as safe. It was false advertising. Eventually, they admitted the truth, right? And now when you see packages of cigarettes, you see the warnings. Well, if Christ is not risen, it's the same thing. It's false advertising. We're advertising in the word that eternal life is found in Christ. But if he hasn't risen, it's false advertising, right? It would mean this, that the apostles, Paul, the prophets, and the ones who claim to be eyewitnesses, they claim to have been an eyewitness to the resurrection. It means they are purposely and boldly leading us astray. If Christ has not risen. So that's pretty serious stuff, right? It would mean this. How could we trust the word of God? If he has not risen and, he, and they lied to us, how can we trust this? And it really comes down to this. Do you really believe this is God's word? It comes down. You have to ask yourself that question. Do you truly believe this is either 100% from God or it's not? you got to make that decision. If it's 50% lies and 50% truth, that would make the whole thing a lie. So you need to make that decision. Why would you waste your time? Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15 to 20, it says this, Today I set before you life and death. I command you to love God and to walk in obedience to His commands. This day I have given you a choice between life and death. Choose life so that you may live. Joshua chapter 24, verse 14 to 15 says, If serving God seems undesirable to you, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Will you continue to serve the gods and idols? But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. What will be your decision? You have a choice to make today. You cannot sit on the fence any longer. Sooner or later, it's going to give. Will you serve the world and Satan, or will you serve Jesus Christ? But praise be to God that Christ has risen, and we are no longer in our sins. For those who have repented, put their trust in Him, that we are set free from our sins, remembering that it is because of our sin that we are deserving of hell. But as we repent and put our trust in Him, we are saved. Time is so short, we have to make that decision. And if Christ has not risen, then guess what? It's bad news. It's, it's no, there is no good news. The good news is Christ is alive. The good news is Christ is risen. But if He hasn't risen, then it's just the bad news. There is there's no such thing as good news if He has not risen. 
Verse 16, or if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. So it's clear, Paul repeats himself, that there's no resurrection, that not even Christ has been raised. Therefore, we have no hope because we're still in our sins. Verse 17, and if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You're still in your sins. Verse 17, that means that st sin still reigns in us. It means that penalty has not been broken, that the power of sin in our daily lives has not been broken. Romans chapter 8, verse 35 to 39 says this, What shall separate us from the love of Christ? Well, if Christ has not risen, then we are, we are not with God. We're separated from God. We never had a relationship with God if He's not risen. That means anything and everything will continue to separate us from God. But because Christ has risen from the grave. There is nothing that can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. Do you believe that, my friend, today? And that is why we can rejoice, even in times like this, because Christ has risen from the grave. That's why this is a pretty, this is a really serious thing, right? If, if Christ has not risen, we're still in our sins. That means we have no hope. We need to grasp the idea of eternity. It's not easy, right? It's not easy to understand this concept of eternity. Because if we are still in our sins, we are spending an eternity in hell. If Christ has not risen, we're still in our sins, which means we will spend eternity in hell. It's hard to understand that concept. You know, the longest I've been in traffic was four to five hours. This was like 10 years ago. There was an accident on the highway to the point that people were getting out of their cars to go and see, hey, what's going on? But in the light of things, looking back and all, seeing all the time that has passed, that was just, you know, that was a blink, blink of an eye. It was so short compared to all the time that's passed, right? But in that time, it felt like eternity. So we can't really fully grasp that. But Scripture tells us this. It will never stop. The torment in hell is forever. Even Satan will be tormented day and night. And that is our fate if we are still in our sins. If Christ has not risen, then what do we have to look forward to? There's nothing to look forward to if we're still in our sins and Christ has not risen and there's no answer. Paul says in chapter 15, verse 32, this is what he says. What do I gain if I fought with beasts at Ephesus? Then what do we, uh, if the dead are not raise, raised, let us eat and drink because tomorrow we die. That's what Paul was saying. Paul in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 32, basically said, what's the point of all the stuff I did for God? If Christ is not raised, we might as well just eat and drink and enjoy our life and die. Because if Christ hasn't been raised, that's what Paul's saying, you might as well just enjoy your life, sin, and indulge yourself, and then die. But Christ, Scripture tells us, Christ has risen. And that's what we celebrate today, right? For the believer, we have hope. And we don't just celebrate this today, once a year. We remember this every day that He rose from the grave. And because of this, we have purpose in life. And because of this, we have comfort. We are not in our sins anymore. We have freedom from hell. We have freedom from our sins. Again, we're not perfect. We are set free from the power of sin so that we are no longer slaves to sin. So we'll still make mistakes, but grace is not a license to sin because Scripture tells us we are slaves to whatever has mastered us. So we need to understand the seriousness of this. Verse 17, if Christ has not been raised, our faith is futile and we are still in our sins. We have to truly understand how serious that is. It means that we are separated from God for all eternity. For all eternity, we are separated from God. So in my house, we have this baby gate, right? In my home, we go down the stairs, there's this baby gate that's so that Kai and Kaya, my four-year-old and two-year-old cannot you know, go up down the stairs and fall or whatever. So I'll be working in my office and all I hear all of a sudden is screaming, Ah, Daddy, Daddy! They want to come up and play. There's a playroom upstairs. I want to play, I want to play! 
So I have to come downstairs, open that gate, because if, if no, there's no way they're not powerful enough to open that gate unless someone stronger, someone more powerful comes, an adult, and opens that gate, right? In the same way, we are separated from God. That's the imagery here. And there's only one that can open that gate. There's only one that can open that door, the only one who can make a way to the Father, and that's Jesus Christ. But if He has not risen, then that door stays closed. If He has not risen, there is no way, there is no pathway to God. We have to understand how serious that means. If we're still in our sins, it means that we are eternally separated from God forever and ever and ever and ever. But praise be to God that Christ has risen. Again, we don't just remember this once a year. We remember it every day that He has risen, even in the midst of what we're going through. Guess what? Christ has risen. In our stressful times, Christ still has risen. In our times of despair and hopelessness and loneliness, Christ has risen. If we fall down, we get back up. There is mercy at the cross. But again, grace is not a license to sin. And we are empowered by the Spirit to continually read the Word every day and to stay in prayer, not in a legalistic way to earn our salvation, but because we are saved. Thirdly, if Christ has not risen, we are to be pitied. If Christ has not risen, we are to be pitied. Verse 18 says this, then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. Let me say that again. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. This is talking about believers who have died in the past. They have fallen asleep. If Christ has not risen, then those people who died in the past of believers, they're lost, they're doomed. There's no hope even for them. Verse 19, If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we have all people, most to be pitied. But praise God that that is not the case. Because our hope is not just for today. Our hope is for eternity. Now, my kids, they can become so focused on some things, right? When they're playing and when they're so focused, they, there's nothing else that matters. My son, Kyan, when he's watching TV, he's so focused on that screen that I, not, nothing else matters. I don't even exist. I'm like, Kyan, I got to go. He's, he's so focused. Well, that's what happens sometimes. We can become so focused on our hope for eternity that we forget that we have hope for today. We're so focused on eternity that we forget that God has given us hope in the midst of our hardships, in the midst of our suffering, in the midst of our trials. Guess what? The hope is not just for tomorrow. The hope is for right now. Whatever you're going through, guess what? There's hope in Christ. Not a wishy-washy hope, but a genuine, confident expectation that God will never leave you nor forsake you, that He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That is the hope that we have. Sometimes in trials, we lose our minds, right? We fall into despair. We try to fix things in our own strength, in our own intellect, without praying, without staying in the Word, without finding strength in the Word of God. And we forget, sometimes we forget that hope is not, we forget that hope is not just for eternity, but hope is for right now, even in the midst of what we're going through. But the opposite is true as well. Sometimes we're so focused on the present that we forget about eternity, right? Sometimes we're so focused on the earthly material things and the temporal blessings of God that we forget that there is an eternity coming because we're so focused on right now. The scripture tells us, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. We forget that this is not our final home that we are just passing through, we are foreigners. So the hope we have is not just for today, and it is not just for eternity. It is for today and eternity. And Paul is saying this, if this hope was only for this life, and there is no resurrection, and Christ has not risen, then, then us, we should be 
the most pitied among people because we're wasting our lives. Verse 19, if only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. It means that we are deceived. But if he has not risen, then the hope we have is only for today, right? If, if there's no resurrection, then this hope is just kind of, we're delusional. It's just fake and it's just for today. It's only for our time on earth. But because, it, because if he has not risen, when we die, we will be condemned. But again, praise be to God that Christ has risen from the grave. And that is why we have hope. And that is why we have hope that our sins can be forgiven. Because He conquered death and sin. He has set us free from the power of sin in our daily lives. And He didn't just take the penalty of sin, but He broke and set us free so that we don't live in sin every day. That we're not mastered by our sins. We all make mistakes, as I said, but we all get back up by the grace of God in the power of the Spirit. Find, we also find accountability. As we repent and put our trust in Christ, the Holy Spirit changes our hearts and our desires and our will, and the Spirit empowers us to continue to persevere living in holiness for Him. If Christ has not risen, then we have wasted our time. I have wasted my time going to school. We have wasted our time reading the Bible and studying the Word, coming to church. If Christ has not risen, this, this time you just spent listening to this has been a waste of time. Coming to church has been a waste of time if Christ is not alive. That means our prayers were in vain. All the prayers that we prayed is meaningless if Christ is not alive if he has not risen. Our hope is just wishful thinking. It means we are deluded. I would feel sorry for us because we would be fools. If Christ is not alive, verse 19, we would be the most pitied of all people. An unbeliever spent their life doing whatever they wanted to do. The believer they spent their life in obeying God. But if Christ is not alive, if He's not risen, then they perish. They're fools. We're fools. You know what? It's not easy being a believer in Christ. There are hardships. There are trials. Nowhere in Scripture does it tell us life will be without issues. If anything, there will be more issues. However, we have the Spirit of God. We're not alone. We have the Helper, the Holy Spirit. We have the Word of God. We have fellowship. We have the local church. Even though there will be trials, it is worth it because Christ has risen from the grave. And for those who repent and put their trust in Him, they will be saved. And they will not be pitied because Christ is victorious. It will actually be the opposite. The early church, they suffered for the gospel. And when I mean suffered, I mean they really suffered physical persecution, torment, and even death. Nero, he would take Christians and make them human torches in gardens. Can you imagine? You're a Christian in Nero's time. He would make you a human torch in his garden for entertainment. That's suffering. For the early church, if Christ has not risen, it means all that they suffered was in vain, right? All of their suffering, persecution, it means nothing. They're, they're fools. They, you know, we should pity them if Christ has not risen. They went through that for nothing. That's what Paul was saying. But praise be to God again that we celebrate today, not just today, but every day that Christ is alive. My friend, Christ is not dead. He is alive. The grave is empty. And because he is alive. We have hope. And not just for this life, but for eternity. So no matter what happens, God is in control. Do you believe that, my friend? No matter what happens in our day and age, no matter what happens in our situation, the Bible says God is in control. Do you believe that? Do you hold on to that? Do you hold on to those promises from the Word of God? Do you have that hope? We have hope because God has not let go of His children. And He will never let go 
of his children, Scripture tells us. And if you are a child of God, it means that he will never let go of you. And that is why we can persevere in the midst of what we're going through. Not because we are holding on to Him. It is because He is holding on to us. Do you believe that today? I want to encourage you, don't give up. Don't rely on your own strength but rely upon Christ and the Holy Spirit that is working in your life. Verse 20, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Verse 20, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. So there's the answer, right? Verse 20, Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. We have hope because verse 20 says Christ is alive. In summary and in closing, because he has risen, we have hope. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12 to 20. Firstly, if Christ has not risen, our faith is useless. Verse 12 to 14, but we know Christ has risen, so our faith is not useless. Secondly, if Christ has not risen, we are still in our sins. Verse 15 to 17, but Christ has risen and that is why we are not no longer in our sins. We are set free from our sins. Thirdly, if Christ has not risen, we are to be pitied. Verse 18 to 20. But because he has risen, we are not to be pitied. Because Christ is alive. Do you believe that? Then we, we have hope. At one time, we were doomed. We were condemned. We were in despair and no hope. We were in our sins. And it is because of our sin that we were deserving of hell. But as we repent and put our trust in Jesus Christ, we are saved for eternity. Would you like that, my friend? There is hope in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this hope is not just for today, but it is for eternity because our Savior lives. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have risen from the grave, that you did not just stay upon the cross or you did not just stay upon the gra in the grave, but that you are alive, O oh God. I pray right now if there's anyone listening to this who have not put their trust, repent and put their trust in you, I pray that they will repent and put their trust in you before time runs out. We thank you, God, for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die upon the cross for our sins. Thank you for the blood that was shed at a cost for us, God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that works in our lives, that enables us to live for you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let us keep praying for one another again. You know, let us continue to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Send this to your friends and let us pray for one another. The devotionals are up now. I'm uh, pre-recording them, posting them up. So praise God and uh, you know, let's continue to encourage each other and thank God that our God is not dead. Christ is not a dead idol or an idol of stone or wood, but He is alive. right? And you know, we will uh, continue to persevere because the Spirit of God is working in His children. For those who do not uh, repent to put their trust in Christ, if you have any questions, please talk to myself, Pastor Rob, or send emails to the church and... Um, we will try to get back to you as soon as possible. So once again, uh, God bless. Let us continue to stay in the word. Let us continue to stay in prayer. And let us remember that we have hope in the gospel of Jesus Christ. God bless.